I went through and did a little research, and we're going to go through the New Testament, and we're going to look at every single verse that has anything to do with pray, prayer, praying, or prayed, past tense. So um, I'm not going to expect you to follow along because I've got all the verses written out here, and it jumps around a lot. And I think most most of you are pretty familiar with, with the New Testament, so you'll kind of, this will be familiar to you. Um, but I found it interesting and, and refreshing and, and somewhat enlightening to see everything at one time about prayer. And since we have a small congregation here today, must be the summer summer uh, last fling for everybody probably, um, if anyone wants to jump in and make a comment on something that speaks to you, please feel free to interrupt. And I'm not going to necessarily have a space for you to jump in, so you're going to have to just say, hey, Matt, or something like that. And um, we, we can try and do this a little more interactive, almost a little bit more Sunday school style. Uh, so we're going to start in Matthew. And um, our first verse is Matthew 5.44, but I'm not going to give references after this point, except to tell you when we change books. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. When you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. But when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he, Jesus, was alone there. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Then some children were brought to him so that he might lay hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. And Jesus said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. And all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. But pray that your flight will not be in winter or on a Sabbath. Then Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Keep watching and praying that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. And he left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Now we're in Mark. In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. After bidding them farewell, he left for the mountain to pray. And he said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. And he began to teach and say to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a robber's den? Therefore I say to you, All things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions. But pray that it may not happen in the winter. 
They came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here until I have prayed. And he went a little beyond them and fell to the ground and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Now we're in Luke. And the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. It was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him, and he questioned them, saying, Who do the people say that I am? Some eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. Oh, and there's the verse that I did had out of order. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different and his clothing became white and gleaming. And it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying this to himself, to himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Saying to them, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a robber's den. But keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. That's it for Luke. Um, in John, the word pray is never used. However, in John, we have um, some fine examples of Jesus praying. Um, that, that All right, moving on to Acts. These all, with one mind, were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which of these two you have chosen. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And these they brought before the apostles, and after praying, they laid their hands on them. 
who came down and prayed to them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray the Lord that if possible, the intention of your heart may be forgiven you. But Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me yourselves, so that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. But Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Paul, for he is praying. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household and gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. On the next day, as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. Cornelius said, Four days ago, to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in shining garments. And he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. An object came down like a great sheet, lowered by four corners from the sky, and it came right down to me. So Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. Then, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. When they had appointed elders for them from every church, having prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And on the Sabbath day, or er, hang on there. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to a riverside, where we were supposing that there would be a place of prayer, and we sat down and began speaking to the women who had assembled. It happened to us, as we were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of division met us, who was bringing her masters much profit by fortune-telling. When he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. When our days were there were ended, we left and started on our journey, while they all, with wives and children, escorted us until we were out of the city. After kneeling down on the beach and praying, we said farewell to each other. It happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I fell into a trance. And it happened that the father of Publius was lying in bed, afflicted with recurrent fever and dysentery. And Paul went in to see him, and after he had prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. That's it for Acts, now under Romans. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them is for their salvation. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. 1 Corinthians Stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Every man who has something on his head while praying or prophesying disgraces his head. But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head, for she is one and the same as a woman whose head is shaved. Judge for yourselves, is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? And we get to judge ourselves there, so not to worry, that was cultural. Therefore, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What is the outcome then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the mind also. 
I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the mind also. 2 Corinthians While they also, by prayer, on your behalf, yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Now we pray to God that you do no wrong, not that we ourselves may appear approved, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear unapproved. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray for, that you may be made complete. Ephesians I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. With this in view, be on the alert, with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Philippians Always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Colossians We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all scriptural wisdom and understanding. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up to us a door for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ for which I have also been imprisoned. First Thessalonians. As we night and day keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. Pray without ceasing. Brethren, pray for us. Second Thessalonians. To this end also we pray for you always that our God will count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with power. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord will spread rapidly and be glorified, just as it did also with you. Titus. Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. For it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. Philemon, and I pray that the fellowship of your faith may become effective through the knowledge of every good thing which is in you for Christ's sake. Hebrews, pray for us, for we are sure that we have a good conscience, desiring to conduct ourselves honorably in all things. James, is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will rise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. First Peter For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment on sober spirit, 
for the purpose of prayer. Third John, Beloved, I pray that in all respects he may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. And Jude, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, 